Sewing makes a good hobby, for it's work with your hands and it's creative. And in addition, you can make dresses for many occasions, from the most dressy to the most informal. Today we have guests, and as you might know, each one has made the dress she's wearing. These guests have all had the opportunity to learn the approach to sewing and many of the methods that we have used on Sew so Easy series. Let me introduce each one of them. Mrs. Adams, Mrs. Anderson, and Mrs. Myers, Mrs. Wells, and we'll take a close look at her dress first, and Carol McConnell. Mrs. Wells has selected a pattern, as we suggested to you select for your So Easy series. Has a collar, set in sleeves, the natural waistline, which calls for a side placket, and then she's covered her belt and her buckle. She's made a very nice selection of pattern and fabric. And this dress will go to many occasions. It's very nice for church. Even after removing the choir robe, the dress still looks fresh and crisp because of its crease-resistant finish. And along with these crease-resistant finishes have come many lovely colors and designs. Yours is a particularly attractive print. Well, I found so many nice ones in the stores that I had a hard time deciding on which one to use. I like it very much. And while we're on the subject, Mrs. Myers is also wearing an attractive and dressy print. These dark cottons have the appearance of a nice rayon or silk. And the dark color makes them a nice year-round type of dress. It'd be a nice dress to wear shopping. And if you're selecting a hat, it can be selected to go with the background color or the accent. A change of hats and accessories certainly changes the appearance of the dress. And the trim you have selected, which repeats the accent color of your print, has helped make this a very attractive dress, Mrs. Myers. Mrs. Adams is also wearing a very attractive dress. However, by contrast, it needs no trim. Mrs. Adams, I imagine you take a great deal of pride in the dresses you make for yourself. Oh, yes. And I do enjoy the compliments of my friends. I'm sure you do. And as you use the easier methods of sewing, I'm sure you'll find that you'll not only enjoy the compliments on your finished dress, but you'll also enjoy your sewing. You'll find that it can become a hobby instead of a chore. Mrs. Adams has a dress that's very good for entertaining. It's comfortable, easy to take care of, and it's washable. So she's at ease in the kitchen and yet well-dressed as she entertains. When using a striped fabric, plan to take more time when you're cutting out your dress in order to match the stripes and work out an effective design. Choose a simple pattern, especially when you're using a bold a stripe such as this. Mrs. Adams has done a very good job selecting such a pattern and matching her stripe. Mrs. Anderson here has gone one better. She's done a fine job of matching plaids. You've done a very nice job matching plaids. They not only match very nicely on each side of your collar, but the plaid in the collar is lined up with the plaid in the blouse. Fairly easy job to get these plaids crosswise matched, but you've matched up the center front very well so that the plaid is well spaced across the blouse. Then this detail that you worked out in the back of the collar is quite well done. The fabric and the design of this dress make it very comfortable for work. It's attractive so that she need not change it if she gets a sudden call from a neighbor 
or needs to do some unexpected shopping. And no change will be necessary when a visitor drops in. Not only for visitors, but I like to look nice for my own family, too. You're so right. And I suppose Carol McConnell, our schoolgirl here, feels that she should always look nicely dressed at all times. Young girls have a wider choice of patterns and fabrics. There are many patterns designed for the young figure. Carol, you've done a nice job selecting the pattern for your blossom skirt. And you've been able to match this flower exactly in your skirt. I notice, too, that you've made bound buttonholes, which always adds to the appearance of a blouse. Then a zipper like this is very difficult to do, putting a zipper in between a pleat. But she's done a very neat job with hers. Even though Carol has made a blossom skirt instead of a dress, she has still had many of the same problems, such as altering her pattern, putting on a collar, the front facing, buttons, buttonholes, many of the same problems that we have covered in the So Easy series. You'll remember that during this series, we've been using the measurements and making a dress for our model, Mrs. Moore. Now, here is Mrs. Moore wearing that dress. Do you know the thing that impresses me the most about this? It's the way this hem hangs, without my ever having tried it on. I know you said you could do it, but I didn't believe it. Well, anyone can make a dress that fits, including a hem that's straight, if you follow the methods suggested in the So Easy series. And that starts by taking accurate body measurements. Then select a pattern of your size and the correct type. Alter that pattern to fit your body measurements. Prepare your fabric for sewing. And be sure to cut it on grain. Complete your dress by units. Do all you can on one unit while it is flat. Pressing as you go along. On the finished dress, the waistline and the belt were both made according to the waistline measurement, so no side loops are necessary. And then the waistline seam was so stitched here at the uh, placket edge to help make this zipper lie smooth and flat. We used a stiff interfacing up the front 
because it needs to help support the collar. Then you'll notice that enough uh, extra material was allowed in this upper collar to permit it to roll over nicely and not let any of the under collar peep out. And then the cuff. It was stitched on with the raw seam, which is hidden when the cuff is turned up. I didn't know you were going to use a plain collar on the collar and cuff, but I rather like it. Well, as a matter of fact, the contrasting collars and cuffs were used as a teaching device so that the audience would be able to see the construction processes I was demonstrating. However, it certainly hasn't hurt the appearance. All the dresses you've seen in this review were made by methods similar to those I've shown you. I hope by seeing these dresses that you will have confidence to go ahead on your own. And as you do go on sewing on your own, you'll become aware that there's usually more than one method of doing each construction process. I have shown you the ones that I have found to be simple and easy. The ideal situation is for you to try these methods and others, and you yourself decide on the one that is best for you. The one that will be easy for you and still give you good results. But don't let your sewing get into a rut. Ideas and equipment for sewing are continually changing. Be alert to these changes. Be ready to try them. If you like them, adopt them. This closes our Sew Easy series on cotton construction. You know, I have enjoyed sharing this information with you. And now, may I wish you the very best of success with your sewing.